بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلق الله أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فمرحبا بكم Welcome back dear brothers and sisters May Allah Ta'ala bless you and grant you success This is our walkthrough for resource number 21 in our study of Al Muqaddima Al Ajur Rumiya, the Ajur Rumiya primer in basic Arabic grammar. We're on page number 126 of our workbooks, resource 21, As Ila Tu Muraja'a Mina Dars Al Hadi Wal Ishreen. Review questions for lesson number 21. And so this means, of course, if you're with me now, you have studied lesson number 21 from the text of the book and along with the recording. And you are ready to challenge your understanding. And you have done that. You've attempted this quiz on your own. And you've reviewed your answers using the answer key. So now at this time, let's go over it together. And maybe we'll come across a few benefits that we didn't get on our own. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. السؤال الأول The first question قال الإمام ابن آجرروم رحمه الله The Imam ibn Ajurrum stated May Allah have mercy on him فأما الكسرة فتكون علامة للخفض في أكمل Complete the sentence As for the كسرة Then it is a sign of the خفض case Of a word being مخفوض In how many scenarios or different types of words? Answer choice A. Arba'ati mawadi'a. B. Mawdi'aini. C. Thalathati mawadi'a. Or D. Jem'il mu'annati salimi khasatan. So are there two, three, or four occasions of this, or just one only? Jem mu'annath salim. The correct answer is, according to the text of the primer, C. ثَلَاثَةِ مَوَاضِعَ That is what the author stated. فَأَمَّا الْكَسْرَةُ فَتَكُونُ عَلَامَةً لِلْخَفْضِ فِي ثَلَاثَةِ مَوَاضِعَ It is a sign. The kasra is a sign of a word being مَخْفُوض in three cases, in three types of words. السؤال الثاني تكون الكسرة علامة للخفض في ماذا؟ When is a كسرة a sign of a word being مخفوض؟ A. الاسم الممنوع من الصرف B. الاسم المفرد المنصرف C. جمع المذكر السالم Or D. الأفعال الخمسة So let's look closely at each of these four language items. And let's see what would the sign of that language item being mahfud actually be. So in answer choice A, the ism that's memnu'a min as and the details of that are coming up soon, insha'Allah ta'ala, it would actually be a fetha. And you don't know that yet? However, you do know that that's not one of the three items mentioned by Ibn Ajur Rum in lesson number 21. B. Al ism al mufrad al munsarif, a singular noun that is munsarif, not memnu'a min as that's actually one of the things mentioned by the author. So, I think we're going to choose B, but let's be sure by eliminating C and D. C is Jemun Mudakir Salim. Well, we'll be studying this language item in the next lesson, insha'Allah ta'ala, in lesson number 22. It is not one of those mentioned by the author. And D al Af'al al Khamsa. Well, that is just a ridiculous answer choice, isn't it? That al Af'al al Khamsa are verbs, remember? So are verbs ever makhfuld? You remember that they are not ever makhfud. Remember, review lesson number four and lesson number eight to be reminded that the khavd case is specific to nouns exclusively. 
and that there is no such thing as a fi'lun makhfuud. There is no verb ever in Arabic that is makhfuud. So we're going to go with B as the correct answer choice. Al ism al mufrad al munsarifi. That is one of the items where the kesra will be the sign for that word being makhfuud. As-su'al al-thalith, the third question. Takunu al-kasratu alamatan lil-khavdi fi. The same question, but different answer choices. A. Tathniyat al-asma'i. B. Al-asma'i al-khamsa. C. Jam'i al-mu'annith al-salimi. Or D. Al-fi'i al-mudari'i. Al-ladhi attasala bihi dhamiru al-mukhataba. Now, again. We're going to get rid of answer choice D right away. We're going to eliminate it because it is preposterous. Remember, there's no such thing as any fi'l being makhfud. So it doesn't matter, all these descriptions that come with the fi'l, it doesn't matter what they mean. There is no such thing as any fi'l, no verb in the Arabic language that is makhfud ever. So then we only have three answer choices. As for answer choices A and B, quite simply, they were not mentioned by the author in this lesson, and C is the only answer that's been mentioned from amongst those language items that are mehfud, alamatu khavlihi al kasra, that is jem mu'annath salim. Barakallahu fikum. As su'al al rabi'u, the fourth question, a'rib al sahab, kama fi qawlihi ta'ala, Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi aushabi al-feel. The opening verse of Surah Al-Feel. What is the i'rab of the word aushab in that verse? And this is essentially a review question because this question was answered in class. Bid that exactly. A. Ismun mansubun. Alamatu nasbihi al-alif. B. اسم مجرور علامة جره الألف C. اسم مخفوض علامة خفضه الباء or D. اسم مخفوض علامة خفضه الكسرة And so, right away, we know that this noun here, أصحاب, is مجرور or مخفوض And so we know that we have answer choices B, C, and D, which begin with ism majrur or ism makhfud, which essentially have the same meaning. As for ism mansub, then sorry, we know there's a ba before the word aushab, and we know that ba is one of the huruful jar, which we have studied, and therefore the noun after it is majrur, also called makhfud. Okay, so aushab, as we learned in class, is the plural of sahib. And what kind of plural is it? Is it jam'u mudhakkar salim, or jam'u annath salim, or jam'u taksir? We remember that it's jam'u taksir. So sahib, if it were made into a jam'u mudhakkar salim, it would be sahibun, or sahibin. And if it were made into a jam mu'annath salam, it would be sahibat. And so here we have al-shab. A hamza has been added to the beginning, and an alif has been moved from after the sod to after the ha. So that is a broken plural, an irregular plural. That's a jam taksir. And the jam taksir is one of the language items from today's lesson, which means that when it's majrur, the sign of it being majrur or makhfud is the kesra. So then, D is the correct answer. Ismun makhfudun alamatu khavdihi al-kesra. As for answer choices B and C, then al-alif is not even one of the possible indicators of the khavd case. Likewise, the ba is absolutely not an indicator of the makhfud case. And remember, the ba in the beginning of bi'aushabi 
couldn't be a sign of I'rab because remember, I'rab is تَغْيِيرُ أَوَاخِرِ الْكَلِيمِ Changing the ending parts of words, not the beginnings, not the prefixes. بَارَكَ اللَّهُ فِيكُمْ السُؤَالُ الْخَامِسِ The fifth question. أَعْرِبْ الْإِبِلْ فِي قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى أَفَلَا يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبِلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ from Surah al ghashiyah the 17th verse. What is the i'rab of the word? Al-ibil. So, before we even read the answers, make sure you look at what's on the lam of al-ibil. Al-ibili. So we have a kasra there. Alright. A. Ismun majroor. B. Ismun mansub. C. Harfu khavdin. Or D. Ismun marfu'un. So right away, three of the answers have the word ism as the first word. Answer choice C needs eliminated because it says harfu khavd. We know that al-ibil has an alif lam, which is a sign of an ism. And it comes after the word ila, which we know is a harfu khavd. That's a second sign of a word being a noun. So we know we have only three possible answer choices here. A, B, or D. And quite simply, coming after the word ila, we know that this must be makhfud or majroor. Both of those words meaning the same thing. So B is mansub, no. And D is marfu, no. Those are not correct. Then the correct answer choice is A. Ismun Majroor Alamatu Jarrihi Al Kasratu Allahiratu Ala Akhirihi Asu'alu Sadisu Al Akhir The sixth and final question Istahrij Kullasmin Mahfudin Min Kawrihi Ta'ala Extract every Mahfud noun from the statement of Allah the Most High in these two verses from Suratu Al Fil. تَرْمِيهِمْ بِحِجَارَةٍ مِنْ سِجِّيلٍ فَجَعَلَهُمْ كَعَصْفٍ مَأْكُولٍ So there are four, obviously, because there are four lines below. Where are the four nouns which are مَخْفُوض? So remember, your signs of a noun. That will help you here. The noun is preceded by a harf jar. Or it has an alif lam, or it has ten ween. And here we have actually four words with ten ween. And that alone should give us the ability to select them. They are bihijaratin, of course, without the ba, because the ba is a separate word. It's a harfu jar. Hijaratin is one word, it's an ism, makhfud. The next one is the next word, Sidjilin. The Tanween tells us that's an ism, and it's min, Sidjil. So then, Sidjil is majroor, coming after the harfu khavd, min. Then you have ka'als fin. You have the kaf, which is one of the huruf al khavd, and you have an ism majroor, as fin. And then you have ma. Kulin. Makulin. These are your four nouns which are majroor or makhfud. Again, hijaratin, sidjilin, alsfin, and makulin. Allahumma barik. I hope you did really well and I hope that you found some benefit in this walkthrough. Now it's time to prepare for lesson number 22. Insha'Allah Ta'ala, and may Allah the Most High give you success and bless you in this worldly life and in the hereafter. Wallahu a'lam, wa salli lahumma wa sallim, wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammadin, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.